Everyone hear, hear me okay in the back? Good. Well, as I have said, I'm Mark Oregon. I'm the president and owner of Oregon Construction. And I uh, had the opportunity to come and speak at Virginia Tech many times, and I'm very pleased to be back here. Uh, when Ivan talked to us about speaking at this Futures Conference and, and where the industry is going for 25 years, he told me the panel that we'd be speaking with, and I knew that we'd be able to hopefully share some of the things that are going on in the industry from a technology perspective, and I think what John just showed us, the augmented reality was really one of the great future trends we're going to see in the industry. So, John, thanks for your great work on that. Well done. What I want to talk to you about today, uh, well, before I get to that, when I think about, you know, the future and, and what we do, we think about it a lot in our company. I mean, it's something we really kind of do every day. And we think about things like technology, uh, like equipment, like tools, you know, where are we today and where do we need to go? I mean, that is just a constant thing that we always do. We look at emerging markets. You know, where is the next marketplace that we need to participate in? Where are we today? Where do we need to go? What does it take to get there? Those are things we absolutely think about. You know, who's my competition? Not only the people that are really good competition here in the room, but in our marketplace. You know, what are they doing? Um, how are they delivering? How do we differentiate ourselves from those competitors? How do we deliver better value to the owners that we serve so that we get selected for projects? For us, that's, that's the future every single day. And whether that's two months from now, or two years from now, or 25 years from now, it really does occupy your job at a, at a very high level as CEO. But what I think about the most is our people and our workforce. Um, having the right people is critical. Without that, the other items I just mentioned above, they don't happen. No one's on the bus, or the right person's not driving the bus. It doesn't happen. So we spend a fair amount of time doing that. So it comes down to recruiting and retaining the very best talent that you can get. A huge factor for all of us. It's our most precious asset and resource or the talent that we have inside the company. So critical to do that. So we look for people that are driven. We look for people that are creative. You know, we look for people that are solutions-based. And I could go on and on describing attributes John actually used the same word in the, in the earlier uh, conversation about this technology. We look for game changers in people. We look for people who come in and drive our business, drive solutions to our clients, and really begin to drive the success of the firm. Um, and that comes from seasoned veterans that are already working there, or maybe working someplace else, but for some reason may want to come work for us, to millennials like yourselves. You know, where is that? talent and where are those people who want to be in our industry, we need to be able to do that. So today, what I want to talk about is the office of the future. Because the office that exists today in most construction companies will not and does not work going forward um, in terms of what we need to do. The office of the future needs to look very different to serve the next 10 years, much less the next 25 years. So what does office space say about your company? What does it say to your employees when they walk in the door every day? Do I feel good about this place? Does it create the right atmosphere and environment? What does it say to outsiders who come into your company? And what message does it send? And then again, as a CEO, you always ask, does it matter? The answer is a resounding yes. This, su this subject for me is very near and dear to heart because we're going through this process right now. We've outgrown our Richmond office. It's been about 10 years since we've moved in there. So what's happened in the industry? What's happened in the workplace? What's happened that we need to look at and, and really take a good hard look at and figure out what we want to do? It would be very easy to take lessons learned from what works well in our office today and what could we tweak and go forward and do an office plan and move on, uh, which would be very simple to do. We decided to take a pretty deep dive and really work with an outside third party that's really pretty well known for their planning, their design, and their research of the work environment uh, and how that works for us. So that's what we've done. I want to talk a little bit about that today. But while we did that, we went out first and did some industry findings. And uh, there are some observations uh, I'd like to share with you that I think most people would find. The demands of the workplace are changing dramatically, and the demands of the worker are changing dramatically. The best workplace solutions really operate much more like software than hardware. They need to be dynamic, they need to move, they need to react to what's going on. Employees want fewer boundaries, more responsibility, and more freedom. 
and I think they've traditionally been given. We talked a little bit about that this morning. And I think one of the great things I heard in that research was it's not either or, it's yes and what else. But what else can the space offer for me? It needs to be both independent and collaborative. It needs to be very focused and at the same time shared in what we do going forward. So as we take a look at best in class companies, let me go back for a second. That's the old tired workstation. You know, you're siloed, you're sitting in there all by yourself, not doing much. Um, that won't work going forward. So the best in class companies are looking at very dynamic space. Um, and if you want innovation and you want a competitive advantage, you need to create a space that will allow that to happen. Along the way, we also did some studies on what we'll call universal business challenges. Regardless of your industry, regardless of your strategy, regardless of what you're doing, these factors form the context of the current work environment right now. And I think they reflect the changing nature. Mobility is probably number one. Work anytime, work anywhere. How does the workplace allow you to do that? Everything you read today talks about the increasing mobility of today's worker. You've got to be able to handle that. You're not tied to a desk, you're not tied to a PC, you're not tied to a phone that sits at a desk. You need to be able to move what you're doing. We have multiple generations in the workforce. And the workforce needs, and the workplace needs to be able to respond to that. We work very differently than you work. We have experience in some areas you don't. But you also bring great things to the table. How does the workplace work for both of us? Am I going to send a 50, 60 year old employee into an open workstation and expect them to work as well as when they walk into an office and close the door, which is what they're used to? Very challenging to kind of figure all that out, but very important. Reputation. If you miss the opportunity to brand your space for who you are, what you're all about, I think you're missing a great opportunity. And it says here, brand really is a form of currency in the marketplace. And it matters greatly to your people internally. It matters greatly to the people who walk in what it says about your space. So you need to be able to do that. Collaboration, almost a broken term today because everyone talks about collaboration, but the space has to respond to doing that. It's not an activity. It is something that happens ongoing, every day, and whether that is serendipitous type of interaction and the discovery that comes from that, or whether that is group work that needs to get done in a very different way, or whatever type of collaboration needs to happen, the space needs to be there to allow that. I will tell you in our current space, we have a handful of little spaces where people can go work collaboratively. <coughs> New space needs to look very different. John talked about well-being, and I thought he did a great job of, of taking in the total employee and the well-being and what that means. It's not just the guy on the bike that you see here. Um, it's all the things John talked about. But some of our other research is telling us some interesting things. How do you take the person who is the least active, the least healthy, comes to work, parks as close to the door as possible, goes to their workstation, sits and works, eats a cheeseburger for lunch, works all afternoon, and then leaves? How do you make that person healthier at the end of the day? Just by coming to work. What kind of landscaping do you create? What type of outside environment do you have? What kind of opportunities for things like this? Or how do you move your print areas so they've got to get up and interact and move? How do you put break areas on every other floor so there's physical movement? How do you let more light into the space? How do you create quiet space? What we're finding very interestingly is there's a need to get away from all this technological connection that we all have. Where's that quiet space where you can put quiet mind? Go research something that's not related to you know, the construction industry. Very important. All of that leads to employee engagement. Current stats today will tell you 35% of employees' time that they consider themselves to be actively engaged. 65% not engaged, you know, at some level. Um, and so how do you go about solving that? It drives human performance, it drives company performance, the ROI is absolutely there. The workplace is a big part of engaging employees in a meaningful way. Autonomy, again, being able to go out and work and control 
when and where you work in different environments. And what we're learning through our research is there's quiet work, there's collaborative work, there's heads down work, there's different work that people need to do. How do we create space that allows all of that to happen? And we're very focused on that right now. Again, I started this at the beginning. All of this is a goal of trying to both attract and retain the very best employees that you have. The most important resource and asset that we have um, is our people. And then flexibility. We talk about the kinds of spaces that are out there. What we do know is change is going to continue to happen. That much is absolutely certain. But what kind of change is somewhat unknown? So how does the space respond to that? And it's a lot less hard walls. It's a lot more flexible furniture. It's a lot more things that you can do to adapt to new technology and new ways of working. And then the thing that I think enables it all is technology. You have to pick up all of your stuff off your desk and your laptop and in your phone and all the other things you do and go to another space to work. You're probably a lot less inclined to do so. You can get up, walk into a room, have access to that technology, have access to shared files, have access to voice over IP where your phone will find you wherever you are. <coughs> Those are the kind of things that will drive, I think, people using space very differently. So those are there for every industry, no matter what. So as I said earlier, change is constant. The workplace changes every 10 years. The workforce transitions every five years. Business changes every three years, and technology changes every six months. Change is out there. The space needs to be able to respond to that. So how did Oregon go about figuring out what that meant? So the first thing we did, as I said, besides engaging this group that we're working with, that does a tremendous amount of work in this area, is we did a culture assessment. And the culture assessment was to get at every single employee in the company and say, where are we today? What's your opinion of where we are on all of these topics that we went through? And where do we want to go? And we tallied that literally for everyone in the company. And we came up with some terms that you may not have heard before. These kind of reflect um, different types of organizational cultures, an adhocracy, and I'll define these in a second, a market organization, a hierarchical one, and then a clan organizational structure. And it's pretty interesting when you see the results on all these things. So on adhocracy, you can read these bullets as well as I, no bureaucratic policies or procedures. Dynamic, creative, and collaborative. Employees take risks. Leaders are innovators and risk takers. You know, promotes individual initiative and freedom. And uh, mistakes do not exist. Um, that's one type of organization. A market organization. A very competitive environment. Focused on getting things done. The cu there's a high customer focus. They work hard and they play hard. Hierarchical, formalized and structured work environment. Procedures decide what people do. It's a kind of a top-down command and control type of approach. Leaders are proud of their efficiency-based organizations. You know, formal roles, the rules and policies keep the organization together, and clarity and quick error detection abound. So again, another type. And then clan. Clan where leaders are mentors to engage and committed employees. Success is defined by addressing client needs and caring for people. Loyalty and tradition abound. Self-organizing teams, coaching, training, and personal growth are also around So it's very interesting. So we went through these questions and we come up with these things. Remarkable how united we were on where we are and remarkably aligned on where we want to go. So as you provide that feedback back to your employees, there's an immediate buy-in in terms of what we're doing, who we are, what's the ethos of the company. Also coming out of this, we, just, we came up with guiding principles for what the organization stands for. We did that, again, through some employee interviews and the next exercise that we went through, which was a workways assessment. And a workways assessment tried to look at how do you collaborate? I'm going to these a little bit more. What kind of mobility do you require? And what type of technology do you need to do your job? And it was down to every single person in the organization. How do you do your work? How does the information come to you? What do you do with that information? Who do you get it from? Who do you need to be next to? What do you do with this information today? 
and what would be the better, more efficient way to do that going forward? So we spend quite a bit of time. How much time do you spend in confidential conversations? How many formal versus informal meetings do you have? How many people are in those meetings? And, you know, lots of answers. I have meetings with two or three people daily. I have one eight to ten person meeting a week, whatever it is. We really try to look at, again, what we do at a pretty deep level. And we really spend time, you know, how much time do you spend working independently? So all good, helpful information. Mobility, same thing. Get into where do you work? Where do you get things done? Um, and how much time do you spend working on in an assigned workspace versus other spaces? And how did you improve your own mobility? And then technology. You know, the storage of both group and project materials, where does that take place electronically? Back to a question that came up this morning, how much hard copy work do we still have out there? There's still a fair amount of that. Um, less than we have, but still something you cannot ignore today. And what, is, what are the technology and tools that you need in order to do the job very, very well? So very interesting things that we went through and uh, you know, where it got us in terms of identifying key performance indicators. You know, where are those things helping us in terms of where we're going? How do we align the culture that we now understand to the workplace in terms of what we're doing? And then how do we design for that flexibility in terms of all of that? And so for us, as we talk about the ROI that's there, the energy in the office today, and we are in our design phase and getting ready to execute on building this space out over the next couple of months, is palpable. It's just interesting to watch when you engage people in this conversation and really help them decide how they want to work going forward um, is pretty interesting. We are currently 70% closed office, 30% open. But in that 70-30, we're 100% offices, well, 90% offices, and 10% you know, workstation. We are going to 50-50, closed versus open, but 0% in closed offices. All the closed space will be in collaboration space, will be in get work rooms, will be in negotiated rooms where we're putting project teams together and we become interdisciplinary by putting our estimators and our project managers and our superintendents when you get a major project and buy that project out together. When you get a get work room and you're in there with your BD people and your VPs and other people in the pursuit of the project, coming up with the strategy, coming up with how we're going to execute on that project and how we're going to sell that project. Um, a BD visualization room, Johnny did a great job of talking about augmented reality. It's here. That it needs to be there. It needs to be on display. It needs to be Usable. It needs to be places that we go. And then all types of huddle rooms and focus rooms and things that we are working on right now that really make this office space look completely different. And for me, I think it's going to be critical going forward as we look into the future, and certainly for the next 25 years. So I want to talk, we could talk about any number of other things that, are, that we could all talk about on the technology side, the tools, the equipment, the the training, the development, the mentoring, a lot of things that we are doing in a lot of other areas. But I really just want to pick this one topic and, and then open the floor up for any Q&A in terms of what each of you want when you think about your workspace and what type of things you're looking at. So, I don't know where the question is. What we're going to do is have everyone talk. I think we're going to take another five minute break if people, when they buy a break, we get to organize and set up. And then we will. Great. Yeah. Happy to do that. Thanks. Thank you.